All right, great. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar titled Joy Forever, Calling on Your Creative Spirit to Excel. I'm Jen Woodside, a Director in Alumni Relations. We are joined today by Susan Curry, a West Palm Beach-based photographer and poet. She serves as an associate editor at La Yoga Magazine and is a published author featured in the Boston Globe, Huffington Post, and other publications. Her words and images have been exhibited at Mass General Hospital, the Photo Place Gallery in Vermont, and the Touch Gallery in Massachusetts. In addition to these endeavors, endeavors Susan serves as a corrupt. I, I said that I was going to say this where I'm corporator for the Griffin Museum of Photography and as a faculty member of the Palm Beach Photogenic Center. We are honored that Susan, as an alum of Paul College, is sharing her expertise with us today. If you have questions, you can see at the bottom there is a Q&A section. Just pop them in there. We'll do them throughout the presentation. You don't have to wait till the end. If you have something that you really want to ask a question about, just put them in the Q&A and we will definitely get to them. We will see them at the bottom. And at the end of the presentation, we'll talk to you just a little bit about follow-up and some things that we will provide to you as um, a follow-up email to this webinar. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Susan. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Jen. Um, thanks to you and Phoebe for all your help in making this, um, this possible. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, I hope that you're staying healthy and safe where you're at. Um, as Jen mentioned, I'm Susan, and I'm a fine art photographer and an author, and I am um, reporting to you from West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, it's really great to have this opportunity. I'm so um, thankful that um, UNH reached out to me. Uh, I graduated in 1988 and um, had a wonderful experience at UNH. There will forever be a place in my heart for Durham, New Hampshire. Um, really a magical time for me. So thank you all for being here. And um, we're going to talk a little bit today about art and how establishing a, a regular creative practice might um, offer you some relief during these challenging times, might um, offer you a joy forever and a bower of quiet um, against the, the chaos of the world. Um, I teach a bunch of creative workshops uh, throughout the country and um, this uh, version of Joy Forever is going to be a little bit compacted to fit the, the shorter window of time here. Um, I always like to begin my, um, my workshops with a little pause, so um, I'm going to ask you to indulge me here and we're going to just take about maybe two minutes um, to just get quiet and just breathe a little bit and have a little bit of a, a landing here, if you will, so that maybe we arrive um, just a little more present, a little more um, at ease. So I invite you to um, just sit back in a way that is comfortable for you. I don't know if you're on your phone or your laptop or your tablet, but maybe just take a moment to make an adjustment in the way that you're seated. And if it would feel right for you, you might close your eyes. We're just gonna, again, take a, a little segue in here with some quiet. Um, I'd like to think of this as a chance to kind of unmind your busy mind, have a little play, prelude in. So just go ahead and take a few quiet breaths at your own pace. If it feels right again for you to have the eyes closed, go right ahead. And you might take these breaths gently and then feel free to sigh out, let it out, anything that is not serving you right now. You might begin focusing on the muscles in the face, maybe just circling out the jaw a time or two. Notice if you're holding any tension in and around the eyebrows. And just bring some gentle breathing to that part of your body. Maybe give the shoulders a roll up back and down and imagine them sort of melting away from your ears. Maybe drop the, the chin and just relax the neck a little bit. 
And then as many times as you find your mind wandering off to your to-do list, to your obligations of the day, just come right back. Just come back to another breath. Nothing to judge yourself on here. And then in your own quiet, just continue maybe a scan of the body and notice any areas where you're holding any tension, maybe bring some awareness to the hands and make a gentle fist. And then with an exhale, just unclench, let that go. And take that imagery along with you through a, through a full scan of the body. And knowing that there is no place else we need to be right now for this next 50 minutes except for here. I'm just going to share with you a few lines from a poem of mine. The cup was drained. Nothing left. Nothing left for this one or for the others. Out of answers out of ease, out of me. Some higher force made this my priority. Breathing in, breathing out, in accord with just this. Just this landing. So whenever you're ready, we'll start to come back into our screens, letting the eyes open back up. And returning here to our, our conversation. So I'd like to begin by um, inviting you to just let this program meet you wherever you are at. If anything strikes you, resonates, feel free to take that in. And if anything feels confusing or out of sorts, just let it go. This is a uh, 50 minutes here for you. So um, I invite you to just be at ease and, um, and breathe and, and see what you notice. As I mentioned, um, I'm a writer, I'm a photographer, I teach some creative workshops. Um, I thought that I would begin maybe by just giving you a quick overview um, and sharing with you some of my work and some of my um, path as an artist. I know we have a very precious window of time here, so I promise not to go on too much um, about myself, but I'll just give you a little overview here. So I've been photographing for over 20 years, I guess now. I began as a portrait photographer, photographing children. I really um, made it my mission to capture their joy, their lyrical side in sort of an unscripted fashion, um, the good days and the bad. And then I moved into um, some more fine art type photography. I lived in the Boston area for much of my life. So 
um, my color palette was very much informed by New England. I began writing as a way to, um, to help promote my photography, to get it out there, to try to get it in front of some new audiences. And then over time, I began to um, marry or set my, uh, my images to, to poetic verse. I like to think of it as you might set a melody to lyrics. I sort of set my images to, um, to words. These are just some examples of how that looks for me. Um, I have a, three books that I've published that are fusions of these words and images and um, sort of an unconventional delivery to poetry, but um, it's, it's just sort of the way it channels through me. And then about a year and a half ago, I moved to Florida and my palette changed dramatically. There's a lot of color here and I really tried to embrace that. And um, it's, it's been a great source of, of cheer and, um, and a, nice, a nice change. So over the years, for me, um, making my, my images, making my poems um, has been a really wonderful source of, of calm, of, um, of an exhale, I like to say. Uh, it's sourced a lot of resilience for me. I don't ever look at it as a chore. It gives me great pleasure. And um, I'd like to share with you some suggestions for how you, know, you might tap into your own creative pursuits and, um, and make being creative part of your everyday uh, existence. Um, the intention of the conversation today is to empower you with a, just a game plan. Um, for establishing a regular creative practice, a habit which might offer you some relief um, and help you uh, source that same resilience and connect with, with some joy. Um, I truly believe in the promise of an art-drenched world and um, I think we all possess this superpower, I like to call it, which is the ability to be creative. Um, often that, that muscle gets clenched, um, that superpower gets untapped. And there are a number of reasons for that happening. Um, some of us carry this notion that we're not an artist. Some of us get uh, joke, choked off by their, their busy lives. Um, there are a number of reasons. So part of this, this practice that I'm gonna share with you today um, just offers you some ideas on how you might um, empty the mind of some of those, those things that are not serving you, clear open some space in your busy lives to carve in a, a daily creative practice. Um, and also uh, just, to, just to remind you that um, we, you know, I did not study art at UNH. I was a student at the Whittemore School. Um, I have a very unconventional path to um, to my life as an artist. And um, I think that um, we really need to uh, change the barrier of entry for art. I think we're all artists and I feel like my calling these days is to get out there and spread that good word. Um, so I invite you as we move along to ask questions in the chat room if you have anything that comes up. Um, you might wanna have a piece of paper, a journal, a keyboard, the notes app on your phone available. Um, if you think you wanna write down a little bit, we're gonna do a couple of brief writing prompts. So it might be handy to just take a moment and, um, and, um, and find something to, to, sh to write your thoughts down in as we go through these five, um, five limbs, I like to call them. So song of yourself. Again, this gets back to what I mentioned. Um, I really think it's important to, um, to empty the mind um, before you begin um, any kind of creative product, project so that you come to things a little bit clearer, you come to your, your art from a more authentic place. Um, so I always suggest taking a little time to, um, to clear away some of the things that are are not serving you and that may be weighting you down and, um, and hijacking any life you might have um, as, as an artist. 
So Song of Yourself, um, this is an opportunity to um, just take a moment and check in and define yourself to yourself. Um, if you wanna pick up your pen or your keyboard, uh, we're gonna just take a couple minutes here with this prompt and I invite you to ask yourself the question, who do you think you are? And I don't mean that in any sort of aggressive or ironic um, fashion, but you know, we carry around these identities often for decades. You know, I'm the oldest born or I'm a nurse or, you know, I'm a, a, a you know, a caretaker or, you know, I, I, I'm not a good baker, you know, you name it. So we have these identities. And if we could just take a moment here and um, without calculating too much, just ask yourself the question. These answers are for your benefit only. So try to be truthful and try to just um, let flow anything that's coming to mind. And just as you're recording your answer, just kind of notice your breathing, notice any contracting in the body as you're answering this question. Who do you think you are? And then just going a little deeper with that probe. Just asking yourself if that definition is true for you today. First day of July, 2020, in summer. Does that definition, does that identity feel like a good fit. And again, there are no right or wrong answers here. And then just imagine Imagine identifying yourself as an artist. And the idea behind this, this exercise is just to clear away any of the myths that you might be carrying about who you are. Um, I find that they can serve as a is a distraction, as a fog, when beginning a creative practice. So be gentle with yourself in these, um, in these probes. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, there is one question that just popped up. Um, it says, do you find yourself answering who do you think you are very differently depending on the day? Like if you are stressed, do you come up with a more negative identity? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. You're going to probably um, immediately jump to, um, to a vocation or an identity that's of service to someone else and, 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 um, and, and have a fee having a feeling like the best of you is, is not is not visible. So yes, and I actually recommend this inquiry um, regularly. You know, daily is probably a little bit, a little bit of a tall order, but I, I definitely think it's it, we can benefit um, from asking us uh, ourselves this question on a regular basis and accepting that our identity shifts and um, ex and understanding that we have some control over over that definition as well. So another area where we can clear away our mind, where we can free up some space, where we can unclench the creative muscle a little bit before we even begin to pick up a paintbrush or sit at the piano or sit at the pottery wheel is by taking some stock of how we spend 
our days. Um, I love this language from the poet Rilke, everything that makes more of you than you have ever been, even in your best hours, is right. And that's such a simple reminder, you know, that feeling of something making more of you. So as part of this exercise, I turn to the trusted pie chart. And again, this is something you guys can kind of play along with if it feels right for you. Um, this is strictly for visual purposes. I really do not eat for 16.7% of my day, nor do I exercise for that much. But I'd love for you to um, just draw a circle, take a moment here and make your own pie chart. Um, initially, go in and carve out the sort of non-negotiables in your day. For example, sleeping, eating, maybe you work eight hours a day. Those things that have to happen every day. So those are gonna be larger slices likely. So just go in there and again, this does not need to look fancy by any means. These, these um, slices do not need to be in perfect order, perfect shape. And then just notice what space is left after that. And then go ahead and carve out some of the sort of non-negotiables in your day. And I don't need to define them for you. You probably have a sense as you're filling them in, uh, the degree to which they're essential. And notice as you're taking up the, um, you know, the, the chart with these slices, how do you feel as you're writing down some of these semi non-negotiables, sort of non-negotiables, and that can be an indicator as well of whether they're, they're serving you, whether they're helping to bring out your best. And so now let's take a look at what's open. Hopefully there is some, some space there. And I invite you to carve out that space doesn't matter if it's a sliver, if it's a quarter of your day, whatever. It's gonna look different for everybody depending on where we're at in our lives, in our careers. And take that slice and claim it. Get selfish with it, make it your own. That can be your window where you begin a creative practice. And that slice can become a non-negotiable as well. Just as you need your sleep and you need to eat. In that small slice is a little freedom for you. So I invite you to, to claim it and make it a non-negotiable. There's a question, Susan. It says, ugh, that made me laugh. My pie chart is heavy on things I don't really want to be focusing on. That does not feel great. What are tips to carve out more space for some joy? Hmm. So that's really kind of got to come from within because I don't you know, know where, where, where everyone's life is at. But um, this is one tip. So you, you don't have to just take um, you know, this, this slice for your creative practice. Maybe you carve out another slice in there for you know, something else that brings you joy, uh, forest walks or walking along the beach or, or reading. Um, but my, my advice is to try to take a look. You, know, you can use your phones for these, these types of things now, record where, where your um, time is going each day and see if you can just start to shave off some of those, um, those areas that are taking up big chunks of your day that you feel are not serving you. And if it means you, know, you get a little bit less sleep, maybe you get up an hour earlier, that's a way to start as well. But it's gonna be different for everyone and I think it's just a matter of you know, spending some time, going inward, weighing the value, 
and, and, and really looking closely to see if you can shave a little bit off of, of some of those areas. Say no, you know, I'm a big um, fan of making edits, um, declining invitations to things, um, saying no more, and, and being, again, a little bit selfish with your time. I'm not saying, um, you know, to, to become a introvert or to, to not be out there um, volunteering and doing things like that, but to just put yourself um, first some days because there's that, that um, you know, saying from the Buddha, there's no one more worthy of love than the one seated right here. And when you do um, give yourself that, that self-care, um, then you're of so much more service to others. So um, I hope that answers that, that question. We're gonna move back in here to this, um, to this third limb of, of this practice. And um, this is basically trying to get back that sense of wonder that again, gets, um, gets hijacked as we age, um, as we have more responsibilities. And um, Mary Oliver, she's a wonderful poet. I'm sure many of you are familiar with her work. Um, this is a line of hers that, that I love that just says it so, so simply. The song you heard singing in the leaf when you were a child is singing still. And maybe you heard your song in the ocean, or maybe you heard it in the butterflies, or in science, or you know, in poetry. Whatever it is, chances are that that um, that tune is is still there, regardless of how many years removed you are from childhood. So I encourage um, people to to go back there, and maybe we can take a little two minute writing prompt right here, and just think about that. Think back, take a moment, take a breath or two, and just think back to your childhood. Um, for me, for some reason, like around eight years old was an age that was just delightful. And I have a lot of memories and I can recall things that I love to do. And that just seemed like a happy time in my life. So go back to your, your you know, favorite age, your favorite grade in school. And, and just take a moment and think back. Try to spark that wonder that you had back then. And if you can recall some of the things that brought you joy that brought you ease, um, that kept you curious. These are, these are clues as to you know, how you might begin to express yourself creatively. What is it that calls to you? Just a simple, simple probe. And with all of these practices, you know, they're not a, a one-shot thing. You know, you just do this once and then you're going to go have this, this ongoing creative um, practice. It's really about repeating um, these steps or whatever steps you create that help, um, help with a doorway in for you to a creative practice. It's repeating it. And then you sort of have this imprint, the muscle tones, the muscle unclenches, you feel a little more um, confidence in what you're doing, you know where you're going. And so at this point, the idea is that you go and you take that slice of your day, and even if it can't be every day, if it could be Mondays, if it could be twice a week, that's fine, you know, we're, we're all living in some uncharted territory right here. And it's hard, I know, to, to have a, a routine and stick with it. So be kind to yourself, but let's find that slice and let's go there in that time of the day and let's take a moment, empty the mind, breathe a little before picking up your paintbrush or, you know, your knitting needles or picking up your flute going to the easel, get quiet, take a few minutes, get present, shed some of the busyness of the day so that you might arrive a little bit more fully and so that your creative project might take on a sacred quality of sorts. 
the idea is to not have it look like a chore, like one more thing that you have to go solve or do. There is um, you know, no grading here. And then we practice. So practice can take many shapes. Maybe you are somebody who uh, was a photographer many years ago and you want to pick the camera back up. Maybe you had a, a writing project and you, you know, your, your writing was blocked for whatever reason and now you want to pick that back up. Maybe you want to pick up a musical instrument. Maybe you want to start taking uh, lessons in some uh, glass blowing or some other form of art. Um, this is what practice looks like. And maybe you're starting new, you're starting fresh, and you're thinking, oh, well, I wouldn't know what to do in that slice of time. And I, you know, again, I'm not creative. Don't let that creep back in. Just keep an open mind. Um, in, in my workshops, I encourage students to, to go if they're, you know, not sure where, where to start. Start an Instagram account and just make a picture every day. Make a beautiful picture of that thing that calls to you and express it in, all, in, a, in a way that only you can. Um, it can be something as simple as that. There are a thousand great apps out there. They're so easy to use where you could um, find a quote, a beautiful quote, and just put the quote on you know, some kind of a, a graphic. Um, Canva is a wonderful um, website for doing that. I'll um, pass along that website at the finish, I think it might be in some of my handouts, but canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. It's a fabulous, fun app where you can go and be creative um, swiftly, seamlessly, every day. That's, that's one option. You could read a piece of poetry every day, and that is your creative practice. You could pull out your CDs or your vinyl from way back when and just listen to a piece of music that speaks to you. So the margins are really wide. There's no right or wrong. Um, we are all, again, I'll remind you, artists in some way. So take the time, be selfish with it, just practice, keep showing up, even if it's for five minutes. It'll start to increase. You'll start to get more into a rhythm and, and enjoy, enjoy. Use that as, a, as, an, as an exhale, as a bower of quiet. Here is a question. Um, I think my creativity really helps me relax most of the time. Some days I get to be a perfectionist and then it is not so relaxing. How do you stop yourself from playing into that perfectionism? Well, um, that's interesting. So for many years I was, um, I was a good photographer, I would say. I was very focused on the technical aspects of nailing a portrait getting the lighting correct and buying new equipment and you know new lenses and what can I do with my camera. And then um, along the way, I became a yoga instructor and I really credit that whole experience with um, relaxing the perfection end of things, with making me be much more at ease um, in my craft. I let a lot of those things go around that time, and um, I would say that my work changed dramatically for the better. Um, new doorways began to, to open for me. Um, I had my books published, you know, right around this shift. So I would say just, you know, find something that is gonna help you to relax some of that effort and calculate less. Um, there are a million books out there on this. Um, if you're comfortable with a meditation practice, you might just start um, you know, by, by two or three minutes of quiet before you go and pick up your, your art, whatever it is. Um, but I think we have too much emphasis on, on nailing it and perfectionism. And this is just me speaking, but in my uh, path as an artist, when I let a lot of that go, it's when my uh, authentic voice became, um, became clearer and I became a little bit more confident in my work. And I just do what I love. I just do what's channeling through me. And sometimes it's messy. And sometimes the, the um, subject's out of focus. And you know what? That's, that's where the beauty um, comes in. So I hope that um, is something that, that speaks to you. Um, but um, just be kind. Be kind. And see, 
see what happens. Um, art, art with um, less aggression, I think, um, is a wonderful thing. And um, along the topic of, of being a yoga teacher, uh, so as many of you may be familiar, because I know many people practice yoga today, there is a um, end to a typical yoga class, um, a period of rest, which is called Shavasana. And in that space of about five minutes, um, the students are invited to, to just relax back, you lie on the floor, close your eyes, get quiet, and just um, after the effort of, of the physical practice, just, um, just breathe and be at ease, ease and allow any of the benefits of the practice to just kind of settle in, come to the surface, and then the instructor will invite you typically during this period to then go be a lamp. When you get up from your practice and you head back out into your busy day, go be a lamp. Go share the merit, it's called, um, to, to anyone in your path and, and share that good energy that you may have um, generated through your yoga practice um, with, with you know, the world for the greater good. So I sort of swipe that, that um, concept and um, I weave it into my, my creative workshops. And I suggest um, that um, you know, we go out and share our artwork. Um, I know that um, you know, it, it is probably you know, gonna be bringing a joy to us, but think of the cheer that it might also spread to others. And, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't have to be a chapter book that you're sharing. It could be a simple picture that you take each day and share with a friend or a relative, especially now when we can stay in touch um, electronically to just uh, put something out there. And um, again, this is some language um, from Mary Carr, the author Mary Carr that I love. Um, and it just really speaks to, you know, that, that separate and silent scribbling, whatever it is, it may add to um, to the to the greater greater good in, in ways that you can't even imagine, and and I'm not suggesting here that artists shouldn't be paid. I you know if you're a professional artist, of course, I think that's um that's um of the utmost importance. But I am suggesting that there is a whole audience out there that we sometimes miss um, when we're so focused on the monetization of art. I think there's a real currency. Um, of gladness that we can trade in when we just share it, we just give it away. That also takes a little bit of the pressure off of us. Speaking to that last question of um, of you know of trying to um, make something for a particular audience, whether it's a curator at a gallery or a, you know publisher at a magazine, and when we relax, you know that 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 idea of who the audience is and just imagine giving it out there to, to someone whose spirits you could lift. Um, it gives you a, a newfound ease um, in, the, in, the, in the way that you make art. At least that's been my experience. And, and I've, I offer this in my workshops and students are, sort of have these aha moments because they're so focused on making pictures and having this, you know, grand finish of sorts, getting published, getting a book deal. And when they think about of just giving it, giving it away, it's, it's sort of a, another language. And, and um, it's been really rewarding to see the work that people make um, as a result of, of, of shifting in that mindset. So. We do have a few questions. Okay, sure. Um, do you have suggestions for approaches to use with young teens who may be experiencing some stress during these past few months? Yeah, so I always come back to just, um, you know, just being a little bit more present and, and getting quiet. Um, and and I'm assuming these are teens who are interested in, in art or, or, or maybe taking on an art project, I'm not sure, but um, nature is a wonderful escape, um, getting out of doors, unplugging. I'm, I have two, you know, early 20, children in their early 20s, so I've lived through this whole thing of, of a lot of anxiety that's still going on for them now, and I'm a big preacher of, of unplugging, 
of getting back to, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations of poetry. And that is to me the ultimate um, in terms of, um, you know, something that can, um, that can guide us through what's going on right now. Um, there are a lot of great resources for that online as well. Um, I think I have some references that are going to be handed out. And in, the, in those materials, I have a bunch of ideas for um, things like this. And um, podcasts are a great, um, just a, a great resource that we have today on all sorts of subjects. I've included a few of my favorites in there. And those are audience, uh, uh, appropriate for audiences of all ages. But um, in terms of teens and starting an art project, I would just encourage them, you know, and encourage the parents or the caregivers to just take any expectations off of it. Just go and just, you know, just express whatever's channeling through you, the beauty in you, and, and um, you know, don't expect that it's going to, to, to go anywhere or to reach any specific audience. And just, just see what happens. See if you can start to to hear your voice um, by being a little more relaxed. Okay, the other question is a little bit more specific. Do you have online yoga classes that you recommend since we aren't going to anything at a gym or studio right now? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so there are a bunch of resources out there for that as well. Um, I don't know if, if you're in your local studio, I always start there because I know these businesses are all hurting but a lot of local studios are um, offering classes online now. And I noticed that they have like a Facebook presence or an Instagram presence where they're making their schedules available. So that's a good place to, to check in if you have a local studio. Um, on a larger level, there is a company called Yoga Glow, Y-O-G-A, I think it's G-L-O. They're based in Santa Monica and they've been around forever and they have a library of uh, every teacher, every yoga style you can imagine. I think it's a subscription style um, service, but um, the best, the best teachers, and um, and you know you can get the classes on demand. They keep very current. Um, so th those would be my two. Um, in, in terms of any meditation that people might be looking for, um, these materials that are going to be available for handouts offer some um some free online um resources for for meditation um so i hope that that answers that question but yes yoga now more than ever we need it okay so um that pretty much is my um, my my five limbed approach. This here is uh, some. These are some of my books. Um, they are available on Amazon. Um, just want to you know leave you with a moment to maybe um, take take uh, your attention inward again here. And if this quote speaks to you in any way, we'll just take a a minute or two here to, again, take your attention back inward and relax your posture a little bit. If you'd like to close the eyes. And again, maybe just a, a body scan and notice if you're feeling any more open or if certain areas of your body are still feeling a little tight, maybe just, just bring the breath into those areas. And this is a wonderful opportunity right here to thank yourself for being here today. I know that noontime on a weekday is not always the most convenient hour, but you got here and you made some time for yourself. And that is a wonderful first step. So maybe you just wanna take another breath or two and set some easy intention for yourself as you 
finish up this conversation and prepare to head back into your day. Maybe just take a little bit of this, this energy with you. Free to turn inward and outward. Free to remain still and wondering amid the mysteries of mind and world. We arrive for a moment at a kind of fullness that overstills into everything. So whenever you're ready, just again, come back to our screens and I just wanted to take a moment to again, thank you for being here. Remind you to go flex that might, which is your creative muscle. We need it, the world needs it. And um, again, a big thank you to the folks at, at the uh, alumni office at UNH for, for making this possible. If anyone wants to stay connected with me, you can do so through my website here. And um, be well, thank you. Thank you, Susan. We have a few wrap up questions, it looks okay. like. Okay. Um, what one of them says, I missed the five points going through. Can you run through them again? Um, or will you share them afterwards? Sure, absolutely. I'll put them back up here on the screen. And we can share the presentation too as well as part of the follow-up. Okay, great. Um, okay, let's see. Well, there's a question that kind of relates. Have you changed those five points through the years or have they been consistent? Um, yes, I, you know, I, they, the titles may shift a little bit, but they're fairly consistent. I feel like it's a, a prescription that I've seen work um, in, in many different instructional settings for this. Um, typically when I teach this, it's a three or four day workshop. So we really dive into each of these topics and, and it, 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 you know, makes it probably a lot more sense. But for the most part, this is, yes, this is, um, this is the, um, the prescription I have for this joy forever component. I mean, if, if we're talking about um, a bigger topic, I teach a workshop on um, igniting your creative spark that's a little bit more involved but for someone just wanting to find you know put up a hand have a life raft that is a a, a, a creative um practice this is this is sort of a concise way that i found um to to get that going great there is a question that says i always feel so calm after these sessions with meditation do you use any of the apps like Calm or Headspace? Um, you know what? I don't really. I'm a writer. I write for a yoga magazine, and I wrote an article about two years ago exploring all the um, all that technology, all those apps. Um, they're great, and I mean, they work for some people. I'm not a big one for paying for these meditation prompts because there are a there's an ocean of free. Um, freely offered med wonderful meditation that I think is a little less slick, that I think is, um, is a little more pure. And um, so they can be great. You know, you do whatever works for you. I'm not, not here to judge. Um, but I personally don't, don't use them. Um, I have other resources. And I, I, I mentioned um, in the handouts a, a wonderful website called dharmaseed.org where you can get some fabulous um, meditation that changes daily, fabulous teachers from all over the country. Um, so that's my, that's my go-to. But I'm glad to see that, that, that you know, med meditation, even if it is becoming more, a bit more commercial, is, is, um, is out there and, and being called upon. It's a wonderful thing. 
Um, this is kind of similar. Is there an online site for your yoga magazine? There is, yes. And it is LA, as in Los Angeles, yoga.com. Great, that's easy. Um, and look, the final thing, I'm just going to wrap up with this because it's great, well, common. It says, thank you. I feel like I just got permission to be creative. Oh, yay. That mm -hmm. makes me day to hear that. That's what I do this for, and that's what it's all about. So, yes, go take your permission and go spread it around. <laughs> great. So, like we said, we will share um, Susan's handout afterwards that will have a lot of these details. And um, from that email, if you, if you get it and you feel like you want more, just let us know, just respond there, and you'll have an opportunity to do a little survey about uh, the webinar and some things that you're looking for future webinars. We do have a full schedule coming up of things still that will go through the summer and into the fall, so we hope you will join us again. And, oh, I have another one. Thank you. This was great. So I love when we see that. So thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in, and thank you, Susan, so much for presenting. Um, and we will see you all on the next webinar. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.